Good morning, everyone, I wanted to say, but well, it's not quite everyone yet. Uh, for them, it's still good night, I suppose, but uh, I, I'm confident that our audience will grow throughout the talk. Um, so good morning, those who have made it that early after the uh, social dinner. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to introduce uh, to you um, Peter Hase, who is the uh, lead of research and development at Fluid Operations. Uh, and is going to tell us much more about both his role and uh, the role of his company and the product. So I'm not going to go into any details there. Certainly someone who has been in the semantic web area for quite a long time. And uh, the system we are about to see also has many connections. So it is not semantic media wiki to the whole ecosystem of uh, semantic applications that we are usually uh, dealing with. And I, I think it will be both inspirational for us uh, and maybe also give us some ideas what to uh, kind of synergies to exploit with this type of enterprise software. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh. Yeah, uh, thank you, Markus. Uh, thank you also for inviting me. It's uh, really a pleasure to be here to give this uh, presentation this morning. Yeah, good morning to, to all of you. I'm glad you made it uh, after last night. I, I really enjoyed uh, last night uh, dinner. That was uh, really uh, an experience. Uh, I hope you like it as well, and I hope you will like my presentation this morning. Uh, Markus already pretty much told you what it's about. Uh, the title of the presentation is Information Workbench, uh, Linked Data and Semantic Wikis in the Enterprise. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I will give you well, an overview of uh, what we are doing uh, at Fluid Operations in the space of semantic technologies. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the project that we have in that space. Uh, the information workbench and uh, how that would be related to linked data and uh, semantic wikis. Um, it's really strange to talk into this microphone and not, uh, <laughs> not hearing the own voice, but uh, uh, I, uh, the, it's, it's for the future, exactly. Yeah. Um, but you're all able to hear me okay? I'm, I'm loud enough, yeah? Okay. Good. Um, I will actually start with a couple of words about. Um, the company, Fluid Operations, uh, many of you will probably not have heard about it uh, so far. Uh, we are uh, an SME, a small, small company, uh, located based in, uh, in Waldorf, uh, Germany. That's also where SAP is headquartered, by the way. So we are uh, based in the SAP partner port. We're currently around uh, 45 uh, employees, and we're active actually in, uh, in two main areas. So, so one is the area that I'm talking about uh, today, primarily linked data and semantic technologies, where we have the information workbench as, uh, as a product, and the other main area is that of uh, enterprise cloud computing. Yeah? So basic idea here is that we, uh, we have a management software for enterprise clouds, and the, uh, the goal there is basically to bring uh, the paradigm of cloud computing to uh, enterprise data centers. Yeah? Uh, so I will focus on the, on the first area today. There are clear uh, interfaces, intersections between these areas. And actually, uh, if I have the time, I will also talk a little bit about how we uh, apply uh, this, uh, our semantic technology stack in the context of enterprise cloud computing. But the focus is uh, on the side of uh, linked data and semantic technologies. So uh, let's get started. I will give you an introduction to RDF. No, I'm, I'm not going to do that. So that was just to scare you. Uh, I will not tell you what RDF is about. Uh, instead, um, I will talk a little bit about RDF. But uh, let's start with this particular triple here. Yeah? Uh, why am I presenting here at, uh, uh, at this conference? Yeah? So I want to give you a little bit of uh, history. And then in the end, hopefully, I will uh, derive, infer this particular triple that we see here. Yeah? And at the same time, I will also give you a little bit of introduction to what uh, graph-based data models are about. OK. Uh, to do so, let's go a little bit back in history. This is uh, me several years ago. I uh, can't actually tell how many, but uh, it was at some time when I was uh, at the AIFB, where I did my PhD. Yeah? So I was working. I've been working in the space of semantic technologies for, for quite some time, as Marco said, uh, working on various semantic web-related uh, topics. Uh, so you see here the logos of RDF, OWL, etc. So this was the, the space where I did my, uh, my PhD in. OK, um, at the time, there were two other guys also at the AIFB, Marcus and Danny. You know uh, them very well. So they were colleagues of mine. Um, 
at the same time, they're also friends of mine, of course, right? Um, and yeah, you know what these uh, guys did? They developed a semantic media wiki uh, at the ARP, right? Okay, um, so I basically was exposed to the early ideas of uh, semantic uh, media wiki from the very beginning. I still remember the discussions that we had uh, actually before Semantic Media Week existed about this, this, this vision behind it. Yeah, when the uh, the ideas were first presented in our over seminar at the uh, uh, AIFB, and they, have, they were very uh, well exciting discussions around these topics and uh, ideas of uh, introducing. Uh, Typed links to semantic wikis. Uh, I, I have to be honest. In the, in the beginning, I was a, a little bit uh, skeptical about uh, introducing uh, typed links to wikis. Um, I was I was wondering whether people would uh, would actually do that and whether there would be some some value to uh, benefits uh, to this. Um, of course, I, I was very much fond of the idea of uh, introducing st structured data uh, uh, on the web. The term linked data at that time didn't uh, really exist yet, but the idea of exposing structured data to the web, I mean, this, this was uh, something where we really shared the vision about this idea of uh, annotating links. Uh, I, I was a bit skeptical at the time. Anyway, um, I was, as I said, uh, exposed very early to these uh, ideas. I was a very early user of uh, Semantic Media Wiki. Uh, I was also a little bit involved in the in developing uh, extensions to Semantic Media Wiki. So I had uh, one of my students was Daniel Herzig, maybe some of you know them. Uh, he wrote a, a, a master thesis uh, under my supervision uh, where he developed an extension to Semantic Media Wiki called uh, Ask the Wiki. Yeah? So this was an extension of Semantic Media Wiki, basically uh, while enhancing the capabilities for semantic search and semantic media. Wiki. Um, also, you know this guy, also a friend of mine, uh, Michael. Uh, at the time, he was uh, affiliated with Enterprise, uh, which, by the way, uh, was a spin off uh, of the ARFB. And uh, Enterprise also developed extensions of uh, Semantic Media Wiki, namely SMW. Unfortunately, Enterprise uh, ceased to exist, but uh, Michael now has his own company uh, that still develops uh, uh, SMW, right? So, which is really uh, fortunate. Thing. I would say. Um, what else can we say here? Yeah, and of course, he's the general chair of, uh, of this conference. Yeah. Good. Um, I evolved over time a little bit. Uh, I think it's fair to, stay, to state that uh, same as a relationship, but uh, we want to talk about the uh, semantics of identity. Probably uh, Danny is the better person to, uh, to talk about that with his background on uh, philosophy. Um, but I think for the uh, purpose of this presentation, I think uh, it's uh, fair to state that. Now I'm uh, with Fluid Operations, and we're developing the information world. And part of this uh, presentation will hopefully also be making this relationship clear between information workbench and uh, semantic media wiki, uh, where there are overlaps, uh, where there are differences, uh, and so on. Uh, there's one important thing missing in this uh, in this graph, by the way, if you didn't know what uh, RDF was about, yeah, what graph-based data models are about, this is all you need to know. Yeah? So this is essentially the idea of, uh, of graph-based data models. Right? But there's one thing missing here. Uh, the slide is already so crowded, I will need to make some space. Uh, this guy is missing, right? Um, you remember who this is? Yeah. Uh, he was also, uh, at the time, affiliated with the ARFB. He was actually, uh, f at least for a period of time, uh, my PhD supervisor. He also supervised Danny. And, well, today he's the president of, uh, of Jesus, or Jesus. Jesus loves you. And, uh, as you know, uh, Jesus, Jesus ho uh, hosts uh, this conference, right? Good. Uh, so this just as a, as a side note. I was digressing a little bit, so I will now come back to the topic of uh, this presentation. Actually, still uh, a little bit of, uh, of history now. Uh, history of information systems, uh, wikis, the web, data, and semantics. Uh, very much abbreviated. Um, but I do want to show you a little bit of how, uh, yeah, where, where from my view, Semantic Media Wiki uh, came from, where our uh, product information workbench uh, came from, and how these are related. And uh, to do so, uh, I, I want to do that with a, with a diagram with uh, two, two simple dimensions. On one dimension, 
uh, I'm showing the degree of uh, structuredness, support for structured data in the information systems. Uh, in the other dimension, uh, collaboration support, in particular web-based collaboration. Yeah? And of course, in the beginning, uh, there were uh, relational databases, right? Uh, of course, high degree of structuredness, uh, but really uh, no collaboration or web support and interacting with the data, right? <clears throat> On the other hand, the other hand, end of the spectrum, so to say, uh, there are wikis, right? Uh, which, at least in the beginning, were more or less focusing on unstructured data, yeah? authoring unstructured or semi-structured data, but clearly with a, a high focus on collaboration, yeah? uh, web-based uh, uh, creation of content, etc. Right? And what Cement Media Wiki tried to do is to introduce more structure to wikis. Right? Uh, so basically taking existing wikis, uh, Media Wiki in this case, uh, introducing more structure and semantics. Uh, now with our information workbench, we have basically come from uh, the other uh, direction, starting out from databases, yeah, and uh, essentially providing yeah, wiki-like frontends to databases. Yeah. And in doing so, we from the very beginning uh, applied or used uh, linked data technologies uh, to enable that, right? Uh, so in this sense, uh, we are more like a data wiki. Actually, data wiki was the uh, name for the uh, for the project uh, that we had before. We called it information workbench. So in this sense, it's probably uh, closer to wiki data. But I put that with a question mark there. I mean, this is clearly something that could be uh, discussed. Yeah? Um, also, onto wiki where we had the presentation about yesterday. This is probably also something that could be put into this space. Good. Um, yeah, a couple of words about uh, linked data and why we think uh, linked data uh, technologies are also uh, <coughs> important in the enterprise context. Um, well, you've, you're all familiar with the idea of linked data, so I'm not uh, going to talk about m much about that, <coughs> about the relevant standards in this context. Uh, you all know that uh, the linked data parada paradigm has been very popular um, in the context of linked open data, yeah? open data on the web. But as I said, we see a lot of uh, benefits of applying linked data also uh, in the enterprise. Yeah? Uh, just to give you some uh, examples why or where we see these benefits, uh, one is in the context of uh, enterprise uh, data integration. Yeah? Really the ability to semantically integrate and interlink data that is uh, scattered across among uh, different information systems in the enterprise. Yeah? Uh, then also really as a basis to support uh, collaborative knowledge management analytics yeah? uh, to enable cross-organization uh, uh, analytics, interactive analytics, etc. and in the end to uh, uh, support or result in better business decisions. Uh, then also um, link data to simplify the publishing and sharing of data in the enterprise yeah? to really increase uh, the openness and accessibility of enterprise data. And finally, uh, this is basically related to uh, or bridging uh, to linked open data and yeah, the benefit of enriching uh, and contextualizing enterprise data through interlinking, yeah, pro uh, providing added value by linking to uh, linked open data. Yeah. So these are some areas where we really see benefits of uh, applying linked data technologies uh, in the enterprise. Yeah. Okay, so um, in this context now, we're developing uh, the information workbench uh, as a product really applying linked data and semantic wikis uh, in the enterprise. And with this platform, we really uh, intend to provide a comprehensive platform for really supporting the uh, whole process of interacting with linked data. And so this encompasses uh, data integration, uh, it in, in, uh, encompasses visualization, exploration of data, it encompasses uh, collaborative knowledge management, etc. This platform is a uh, an open platform in the sense that we build on uh, open standards uh, and technologies. Yeah? Uh, so we have a semantic wiki based uh, front end. So this is uh, our own uh, implementation. But uh, in that implementation, uh, we are actually using uh, semantic media wiki syntax. So we're com compatible with, uh, with that syntax. Yeah? Uh, we support all the relevant uh, W3C standards, including OWL, RDF, and Sparkle. Um, soft uh, the software is open also in the sense that we have uh, an open source version of it. Yeah? So we have a community edition that is fully functional. Um, and an open source license, LGPL. And uh, for commercial um, applications, we also have an enterprise edition, uh, 
well, which extends the functionalities and is well, primarily used for the uh, uh, application enterprise context. Yeah. It's also really uh, a platform for application development. Yeah? So the platform itself provides uh, a lot of functionality, base functionality, out of the box. Um, but it also provides an SDK for, for easy extensions. So really extension on all levels of the platform. You will see that uh, a little bit later on. Uh, in contrast to Semantic Media Wiki, the, um, the platform is uh, implemented entirely uh, in Java. It also has a very flexible uh, AJAX uh, front end that allows to uh, integrate yeah, more or less arbitrary uh, web components uh, into the application on the front end side. Right? OK, a uh, little bit about the architecture. I don't, don't want to go into too much detail here. but. Uh, just uh, on a very high level, con con conceptual level, well, what the information workbench looks like. Uh, yeah, let me perhaps start uh, at the center. At the center, you see a database, uh, a triple store, yeah, which uh, essentially um, hosts the, in the integrated data. We then have uh, so-called um, data providers that allow to tap into arbitrary uh, data sources and uh, essentially provide uh, a linked data view over these data sources. So these uh, data sources can, could either be uh, enterprise data sources, like legacy relational databases, XML databases, ERP systems, or whatever you have, and can also be open data sources. Yeah? So this can be uh, linked open data sources that uh, are already published as, as RDF, could be social media uh, sources, yeah? like Twitter, Facebook, or uh, data that comes from uh, openly available data markets. Yeah? So essentially what these data providers do is uh, they provide a linked data view over the data, yeah? so they do a semantic lifting, translation to RDF data model, and then the resulting data is uh, stored in uh, a triple store. Um, or let's just, for, for now, let's assume it's a, it's a triple store. I will talk about the various options for integration in more, in more detail later on. Uh, on top of this triple store, Oh, by the way, I should also mention that uh, so we see here primarily the, the structured data, but in the, in the database we are also able to uh, associate unstructured uh, content uh, with the structured data. So basically the idea is that every uh, resource in the linked data graph can also be associated with uh, unstructured media documents, for example, a wiki page. Yeah? So by default, every resource also has an associated wiki page. So on top of this database, we then have components for well, intelligent data access and analytics, uh, supporting search, etc. Uh, we uh, the platform provides uh, support for collaboration, yeah, including curation and uh, authoring of data, but also uh, collaborative workflows. Um, on the front end side, I will uh, I think I will talk a little bit more uh, about that later on. We have uh, yeah a very flexible web-based front end uh, that allows to build. Uh, dynamic which uh, end user applications uh, through um, semantic widgets uh, widgets for uh, well supporting different kinds of interaction with the data yeah uh, as I said visualizing navigating uh, collaborating uh, etc and uh, on top of this platform uh, which is generic by itself we can then build uh, custom applications for particular uh, application domains verticals and I will talk about those uh, later on as well. Good. Uh, so I was mentioning that, oh, I'm, I spent a lot of time on the introduction already. Need to speed up a little bit. Uh, yeah, I was showing uh, basically a centralized uh, database for the integration of the data. Just very briefly, I uh, just want to say that in our platform, we have uh, different alternatives uh, to do the integration. Uh, one alternative is that uh, we actually use these uh, data providers to, uh, well, essentially copy the data uh, in an ETL-like process into a centralized store. Yeah? So this basically creates a copy of the data. But we also uh, do have the ability to support uh, virtual integration, yeah? where we uh, essentially have a uh, federation mediator over the uh, distributed um, data sources. And then the data actually uh, remains in, the, in their original sources, and we provide uh, a virtualized view over those data sources. Yeah? So for this. Uh, Federator, we actually, well, uh, FedEx is our uh, implementation of this, uh, um, um, of this uh, federation layer. Yeah? Essentially, the information workbench uh, then sits on top of uh, uh, this uh, FedEx uh, mediator. And to the application, the uh, 
physical distribution of the data is actually uh, completely transparent. Yeah? So you can interact with the data as if it were uh, it, uh, integrated in a centralized way. Okay, a couple of words about the, the front end side. I already mentioned that uh, we here have a semantic wiki based uh, front end with the ability to embed rich widgets. So this is very similar to, the, to what you have in uh, semantic media wiki. Yeah? In semantic media wiki, you also have the concept of, uh, of templates uh, to build particular, let's say, uh, interfaces for particular uh, uh, concepts, uh, for example. Yeah? We have a very similar thing. So we have an ontology-driven template mechanism, which essentially uh, allows to, to, to define uh, well, the layout of particular uh, pages for particular elements of an ontology in a completely declarative way uh, a wiki, with a wiki-like syntax. Uh, these widgets, of course, have direct access to the uh, RDF database, yeah, and uh, they can then uh, implement, for example, uh, well, components for uh, <coughs> data exploration, visualization, uh, analytics, uh, etc. Uh, I'll show that in a, in a demo in just a minute. Here, just uh, some selection of widgets uh, that we support here. Uh, as I said, we do provide uh, a lot of widgets uh, out of the box, but it's also very easy uh, to create your own and uh, embed them in the platform now. Uh, I think this part I should uh, show in a, in a live demo how this actually works. So here you see, this is a widget that you also have in Semantic Media Wiki, by the way, uh, based on simile, uh, simile timeline. Uh, here you would see the, uh, I'll show that in the demo and it's easier to read. Uh, here you basically see the specification of this widget uh, in wiki-like syntax. We also have a, a, like a wizard, yeah, a graphical editor for, for specifying these widgets. And uh, yeah, in this mechanism, you can then, it's very easy to build uh, templates for particular uh, domains, ontologies, etc. So for example, here for a person. One of our application areas in data center management, yeah, for example, for a physical host, yeah, uh, for a uh, biochemical um, concepts for uh, ontology concepts, so you can build an ontology editor based on this and so on. Okay, um, perhaps let, let me quickly go to a, to, to a live demo. Um, basically, uh, I want to start, uh, I, I want to show you uh, really from scratch how you can uh, interact uh, with this kind of data, how you can do this, uh, uh, these aspects of data, dynamic data integration, visualization, building frontends, etc. really from scratch. And I was thinking I would best do that with uh, data from this conference or from this community. So you all know semanticweb.org, right, which is, a, uh, which is driven by Semantic Media Wiki, uh, of course. And uh, what I want to do is I want to take basically the content of this wiki, uh, and integrate it into the information workbench just to show you what uh, kind of things you can do there. Yeah? Uh, the content of semanticweb.org, uh, well, in particular, the, the structured content is available as an RDF dump. So what I will do is I will take this RDF dump and uh, just load it into an empty instance of the information workbench and then uh, start from there. Yeah? Okay, so, uh, okay, so the resolution is a little bit... Uh, I think it's okay. So this would be basically be the, uh, the start page of the information workbench. And from there I can, uh, for example, uh, I will need to log in again. Um, I can, for example, import uh, RDF data. Yeah? So let's, for example, take this particular uh, link here, the export of uh, Semantic Media Wiki, and let me import this. Yeah? So I can import the URL, but the... Um, uh, the wireless was was a little bit slow. I uh, I would will actually do that via a file. I have already take downloaded the data and have it locally, so this would be a little bit faster. And I specify a target context where I want to uh, import this data to. I say import data. This will basically import the triples now into my instance of the information workbench. One. Okay. Okay, and now here I basically see a summary of uh, what I just imported. Yeah? Uh, so during the import, we also calculated some statistics. We're using void for representing uh, uh, metadata about data sets, actually. Um, so this was close to 100,000 triplets that we just imported, yeah? with 723 classes, properties, and so on. Also, you get a quick overview in terms of 
what classes and properties are available. So this is actually not so interesting. So, well, uh, so this, these are the classes uh, in the tech cloud uh, by the number of instances for that class. Uh, obviously, subject is the most prominent uh, class here. Yeah? Uh, okay, you see what properties there are available and so on. So, so basically, this data is now uh, available. Let me just check what we have uh, on SMWCon. Okay, so this is basically now utilizing a full text index over the data that uh, has been imported. Yeah? So there are different uh, instances of SMWCon, but let's take this one. Okay, um, so now what's the basic idea of the, uh, of the user interface that we have here? We have different views on the data. One view on the data is basically this uh, wiki-based view. Actually, what we see here is uh, the original wiki page uh, from, from the semantic media wiki. Yeah? Uh, in this case, I didn't physically uh, import uh, the data, the, the, the unstructured uh, uh, wiki pages into the system. Instead, what's happening now is uh, a live lookup via Wikibot is actually uh, uh, fetching the data from, uh, from the original wiki. Yeah, so if you look at the revisions, so this actually, yeah, so this page has just been loaded by, by Wikibot. Yeah? Uh, <coughs> so typically the data is, uh, stored locally, but you can also connect to, to other kinds of uh, CMSs, wikis, uh, etc. So this would basically be the, uh, the view on the, on, on the wiki page. And we have uh, other views on the data, in particular on the, on, the, on the structured data. So for example, what you see here is uh, what triples we have available here. Uh, so for example, we see, uh, okay, so this SMW con is of type subject, it's of type uh, event series. Oh, by the way, so for these uh, uh, various data sources that we integrate. We also manage uh, context or provenance information. Yeah? So for every single triple, you see where it, where it comes from. So this is similar to the concept that uh, Danny talked about yesterday in, uh, in supporting uh, claims and statements uh, about claims. And if, you, if I do a mouse over here, then I actually see uh, metadata information, or at least a brief summary, that this uh, triple actually was uh, added while I uh, imported the data, when, and so on. So basically, you see, have metadata like where's the data from, who created it, and so on, which data source it's from, etc. Uh, a graph-based view. Uh, so this is the, the raw uh, a raw graph. So this can all be customized. The different uh, uh, views on this. Uh, okay, graph-based view, and then we have a what we call pivot view. This is more like a, a visual representation of basically the uh, of the linked data graph. So basically, what is shown here is the, uh, well, basically the uh, neighboring nodes in the linked data graph for this particular concept. So in, uh, in this case, uh, what we see is essentially the instances of, uh, or the elements of this particular e event series. Yeah? Uh, so this is essentially what, what, what you see here, this is an RDF node together with, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the properties of these nodes. Yeah? So this is uh, SMWCon. In spring 2012, you see the metadata that we have available here. And now we really have a, a visual interface for exploring like a, a, a linked data graph. Yeah? Uh, so for example, here in these facets, we could now, for example, filter by the resources that are, or the, the events in this case that are located in Cologne. Yeah? So here we have SMWCon for 2012, yeah? or we could Let's say group by their location country. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So actually, three of them already were in the U.S. Okay. Um, perhaps let's uh, rest Cologne. Maybe we have Cologne. You could now click here. Okay. I'm now on the page of of uh, <coughs> today's event. Okay. Uh, I'm spending much more time on this than I uh, intended. Let me just do another s quick search here for myself. Okay, uh, I wanted to show show you the, the template mechanism. So what we see here actually is a um, page for myself that is driven by a template. So, so if you look at the underlying data, um, this particular resource is of type uh, person. Semantic Media Wiki uses fourth person uh, for uh, representing persons. And um, we happen to have a, a, a template in the system for displaying uh, persons and these templates. But let me, so what, what do we show here? Yeah? So this uh, basically where I was a PC member at conferences I attended. Or oh, here you also see a widget for, for data entry. So for example, I could 
connect uh, an online account. Perhaps let me just do that uh, just to show you how this works. I'm adding my Twitter account, for example. But uh, see, a Twitter widget uh, uh, pops up that shows my uh, Twitter. Stream. Ah, here, see, this interesting news. Fluid Ops wins best, uh, best in Cloud Award. It was just yesterday. Um, OK. What did I want to show you? Yeah, the templating me mechanism. So we have a template for fourth person. So this is uh, very simple, similar to the semantic media wiki concept of uh, templates. And basically, we use these templates to, uh, to surface the underlying uh, RDF data from the various sources. Yeah. Uh, so we have, for example, have the ability to, um, using this notation, to access uh, structured data elements from the data uh, uh, from the database. Yeah. So this. Uh, that fourth uh, name would display the name of the person and so on. Uh, or let's take yeah this widget here, so you can also graphically uh, uh, specify this widget configuration. So this basically would uh, this is an interface for basically creating forms, if you will, uh, forms for, for forms for data entry. Yeah? Um, okay, I need to speed up a bit. I wanted to show a bit about. Um, Structured data querying. Uh, of course, there's also Sparkle interface over the integrated data. Yeah, I just this is a more or less a random uh, query that I came up with. That is still simple to explain, but still uh, complex enough in the sense that it uh, does some aggregations. It has some group by counting, uh, filter, optional clauses, and so on. This basically is a query that asks for the events in the database together with their start date, and it counts the number of PC members uh, that are known in the database. Eh? Um, let me just submit this query. OK, and what you get now basically is a uh, result set. Yeah? So event name with a, with a label, start date, and, and the count of the PC members. Eh? And now again, also for these, uh, for these query results, we can uh, apply uh, our widgets. Yeah? So for example, you can say, okay, uh, so he, this, these are widgets that are automatically suggested based on the uh, on the result. Yeah. So, for example, okay, we have uh, numerical data there. Numerical data can be shown on a on a bar chart, right? So we have here now on a bar chart uh, the events by the ISWC with one. Uh, this has a lot of PC members, or you can also have that on a on a pie chart, right? Actually, ISWC is in there uh, twice, one the, once with a space and once without. So this is uh, unclean data, but okay. Or uh, we also have temporal data, yes, so you can also show the query result on a, on, on a timeline. Yeah? And then you can also very easily uh, interactively uh, modify the, the visualization. For example, you can edit this widget. So this visualization has been created automatically, but obviously you may want to able to override something. So for example, uh, for the label, I actually want to show the label here. So, so this was. Um, let, let, let me go back. So this was actually showing the the UIs by default. Yeah? So this is maybe something that you don't want to see. Uh, so let's just say, okay, instead here yeah, I want to show as a label the label from the query, right? Uh, and now we have the the labels instead. And here's our conference, right? Okay. Um, so in this way, I, I'm not showing all the interaction mechanisms that you have. That you have, but you can refine the query, you can refine the visualization of the queries, and then you can also obviously store uh, the result of uh, such an interaction uh, on a page. Yes, yeah? so you can, for example, take uh, this widget configuration. Uh, I don't know. For example, uh, oops, this is not what I wanted. Uh, I wanted to just create a new page. Oops. Let's say, let's call it my query quickly. Yeah, copy this in. It's in here, and this way you can very easily build your own uh, pages, uh, whatever uh, dashboards, reports, etc. There are a lot more uh, widgets available, and, and using this uh, these mechanisms, you can also build serious applications. Obviously, yeah? so this was just showing how you can really do this quickly from scratch. Uh, actually, we have. Done a similar thing. Uh, I'm not talking about the enterprise applications yet, but I do. So actually, a uh, very similar thing we have uh, done with uh, an application called Conference Explorer. Uh, 
it was just a well an exercise that we did. There was this uh, linked data thon at uh, last uh, last year's ISWC, like a competition uh, where the idea was uh, you should build rapidly build a linked data application that makes use of conference metadata and does some useful things. And uh, I think you had uh, one week of time uh, to implement this, and we said, hey, this is exactly uh, uh, what the information workbench can do. So we uh, build an application that. Uh, integrates various data sources, yeah, like the conference metadata, public bi bibliographic me metadata, we enrich this with uh, social network data, yeah, so we have data providers for Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, so this is all, what, all, all this information workbench has out of the box, yeah. link geo data, yeah, and then build uh, like a demo application that shows conference schedule, statistics about the conference, background information about the conference attendees, uh, and so on. Let me very quickly show this, uh, perhaps, um, Where's our Conference Explorer right here? So this is actually very easy to do. So, so, so you see here some, uh, well, a lot of conferences where we, where we did this for. So it's a really very simple process. You just point to the uh, original data source. The data is automatically integrated. And based on these templates, you then immediately have an application for interacting with the data. So we have what we have in here is the series of ESWC and ISWC conferences, the Semtech conference series, uh, the World Wide Web Conference series and so on. Let me just click on one of the conferences. Uh, the network still working, yeah. Uh, so this is basically the start page for for the Semtech Biz in San Francisco this year. So you basically you see here an event schedule, sessions overview, uh, tech cloud that shows the most important concepts covered at the conference. The presenters here on a on a map. You see the people following the conference on, on, on Twitter, yeah. Uh, let me just browse through, for example. What do we have here? Ah, here's, here's Danny's presentation, Wikipedia's uh, next big thing, yeah. Uh, page for the uh, for this particular talk. Uh, you see, in a, this is another another graph that we have for visualizing the, basically the relationships with other resources. And Oh, then, then he has many affiliations here. Uh, let, let me just click on uh, one of them. Yeah, so here we have uh, Danny with, in this case, just Twitter information available. And again, so this is the same template that we saw before. You can connect online accounts and so on. Uh, you can do more detailed analysis, for example, about his what he's doing on Twitter. Yeah, his uh, his neighborhood uh, on on. On a map, social neighborhood. Uh, um, what we can also do is uh, temporal data analysis. So these data providers, they can also create uh, snapshots at a particular point in time. So you can see how his number of uh, followers uh, evolves over time, his most popular friends. <laughs> so this is re really a uh, very simple thing. You just point to, you just say you want to have Twitter as a data provider, yeah, you know what resources you have in your linked data graph, and uh, basically the data provider automatically augments your data graph with this social network data, yeah, and you can do that for any kind of uh, data source, and then, again, you can also, I need to, uh, this is, can I, this is not what I wanted, let me, this is something with a resolution that's not so nice. Uh, What's nice for this social network data is also again this uh, this visual exploration of such a, a social network graph. So, for example, here you see uh, my social uh, network on Twitter uh, as a visual representation. So, every resource that we have here is uh, basically an uh, uh, element in my uh, or resource in my uh, neighbor, people that I'm that I'm following or following me. Here we have Yen and so on, and then we have metadata about these various people in this case, yeah? and we can then use this metadata to explore this data graph. So for example, you can uh, filter by uh, who are the, the socializers in, in my network, yeah? and or who are the, who are the networkers, yeah? and so on, right? Um, or you can do, let's say, what would be interesting, uh, a drill down by locations where the people are located. Yeah? I'm interested, for example, in people who are based in San Francisco, etc. Uh, so things like that. Yeah. Um, I need to again speed up a bit. I think you get uh, the idea. What I wanted to talk about uh, was more. Oh, another slide that I just added. Uh, uh, that I just added 
yesterday uh, came to my mind during the discussion some things that are uh, about the relationship with uh, SMW and uh, Wikidata. Yeah? Uh, some statements that uh, were made yesterday. Uh, so one was um, people are scared of wiki markup. Um, and essentially the uh, basic idea there was, uh, the, the statement there was that semantic links for creating structured data is not something that uh, uh, that people use. Yeah? And this is something that uh, I wanted to confirm from our perspective. Yeah, uh, So for really entering, authoring structured data, yeah, people need form-based uh, uh, approaches. Right? Uh, so we, in, in our wiki, we, we essentially never use uh, the semantic wiki, uh, the wiki syntax for uh, supporting the uh, basically authoring of structured data uh, by the end user. Yeah? We primarily use the, uh, the wiki uh, for surfacing the, the structured data from the database, yeah? for presenting, visualizing it. Yeah? Uh, but there the, the wiki pages are really authored by, or by, the, by the admins, by the developers, yeah? but not really by the end user. Yeah? And the end user only uh, interacts with the structured data by forms that are embedded into the wiki pages. Yeah? And if people use uh, really the wiki, then they do that for, for unstructured documentation. Yeah. Uh, another comment was this uh, on support for uh, diversity. So this is related to, to Wikidata. Um, so in Wikidata, then he talked about these statements that essentially uh, reify uh, claims. Uh, the approach that well, I showed only uh, on a very high level, very briefly, was that we use uh, named graphs. Yeah? So, uh, Every triple that we have is uh, associated with the named graph, and we can then make uh, statements about these named graphs, yeah, uh, where the data comes from, confidence, etc. Conceptually similar approach, uh, but actually uh, we don't do that to support diversity. We do do that to have provenance information about where the data comes from. But uh, actually, with the applications that we support, we actually try to fight diversity in this sense. Yeah. Uh, so if we have uh, data that is conflicting, then this typically is, a, uh, is really an inconsistency or a redundancy or you have mismatches. Uh, so what we really want is that uh, so, so, so many application areas that we have are in the, in the space of semantic uh, master data management. Yeah? So you really want to have the truth, at least for the, for the enterprise. Yeah? You want to have one view on the data yeah? and uh, not really um, supporting diverse views. Yeah? Uh, where you perhaps have uh, conflicting ideas of who your managers are. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this just as a side note, I wanted to talk about, uh, where's my thing here? Uh, application areas really in enterprise settings. As I said, we use this platform for building applications in different uh, verticals, for example, in uh, pharma domain life sciences, uh, supporting uh, digital libraries, media and content management, uh, and uh, one of our main areas is really this area of uh, intelligent data center management. So this is really application of this platform in, uh, the, uh, in the space of uh, enterprise cloud computing that I mentioned in the beginning. I have to see how much time I have here for really live demos. Uh, I can show something here in this uh, media and publishing domain as well as uh, data center management. Perhaps let me, let me start here. Uh, with a small case study or example with uh, BBC that is one of our customers in this uh, space of uh, semantic technologies in the, in the media domain. You, you're probably very, you've probably heard about the dynamic semantic publishing strategy that the uh, BBC is pursuing. Who, who has heard about that? Yeah, uh, only a few people, okay. Uh, so then very briefly, so uh, many of the websites uh, of the BBC are now really nowadays driven by semantic data, by linked data. Yeah? Um, for example, what, what I'm showing here is uh, it's just a screenshot from the um, uh, Olympics uh, website, 2012 Olympics, that were just hosted uh, in the UK. And all these websites are really driven by uh, RDF data. Yeah? Uh, so for example, what you see here, I mean, all these, basically all these pages, uh, countries, athletes, and so on, yeah, are really uh, resources in RDF uh, data graph, and these pages are really rendered from uh, an underlying RDF database. Um, so why, 
why are they actually doing this? Why are they uh, following these uh, semantic publishing uh, strategies uh, instead of classical authoring of, uh, of web pages? The reason really is that uh, the, the sheer amount of data. Yeah? Um, so for example, for the Olympics, yeah, you have uh, more than 10,000 athletes. Yeah? You have uh, hundreds of, uh, of countries. Yeah? hundreds of disciplines and, uh, and competitions. Yeah? And really manually uh, authoring um, pages by journalists is really a, a far too expensive process. Yeah? And um, that's why the, the BBC has uh, um, changed to this dynamic semantic publishing strategy where really uh, content is or pages are really uh, rendered uh, automatically based on uh, structured data that is uh, available, you know? uh, so really to, to automate this process of content aggregation. Uh, in this context of the dy dynamic semantic publishing strategy, our tooling, our information workbench is uh, used to, on the authoring side uh, to uh, yeah, support, for example, data journalists in collaborative uh, authoring and linking of uh, unstructured and uh, structured semantic data. Yeah? So basically for the ontology and instance data management. Yeah? Um, for, I have to say, for the for the Olympics, uh, the data was uh, not manually authored, yeah, but they got this uh, data already in structured form from external sources. Yeah, so there was no manual authoring involved here. But in principle, um, our tooling really provides a front end for end users. In this case, uh, well, data journalists, data architects, to author uh, this RDF data, this RDF uh, uh, or linked data, and. In, in, uh, in a user-friendly way. Also, we support these uh, editorial workflows uh, in, the, in this context. Uh, if I have time, I'll talk a little bit about that. Perhaps just oh, here, just uh, uh, an example or a small fragment of the underlying ontology for the for the, for the BBC in this case. Yeah, so you see the kind of uh, concepts that we have there. Yeah, uh, events that are related to, well, primarily see, you see events and disciplines in this particular. Uh, screenshot of the ontology that I don't want to uh, explain in much detail right now. Uh, also in terms of the architecture that we have here, I think I will just uh, uh, skip that. I think I, well, on a high level I already said that really the information workbench is used as a front end for authoring uh, the structured data in an RDF database. Actually, in the setting that, uh, that we have there, there are multiple databases involved in this publishing scenario. So the, uh, data journalists, they initially operate on a staging database and then after following several steps in this editorial workflow, the data is only published really to the, to the live database that then really drives uh, the website. Yeah. And yeah, perhaps a, a couple of words about this uh, workflow that we have um, uh, supported there. there actually, in this workflow, there are actually different user roles uh, involved. Yeah? So for example, the, the regular journalist who is able, only able to view the instance data, yeah? you have, then you have uh, Oops, this is going automatically, where is that? Uh, we have sub-editors who can uh, edit the instance data, media managers who can then uh, approve or reject uh, changes, yeah? and then data architects who then really publish the data to the, to the live site. Yeah? So here you see, this, uh, you see this, uh, these uh, state transitions. Yeah? So initially every change, every edit that is made is in a draft state, but then has to be approved uh, or can be rejected, and only if it has been approved, it is then finally published. Yeah, so these uh, workflows on the data we also support. Right? And by the way, by the way, these uh, states uh, to the changes they are also managed uh, using named graphs. Yeah? So we know who has performed what, what change, uh, and why, uh, etc. Right? Um, perhaps I have time for a quick, very quick demo. Uh, Okay. So yeah, I just want to show you how really this uh, information workbench uh, looks like on uh, on the um, Olympics data set. Uh, I think I have to reload this page. Oh, okay, I'm logged out. So I'm now logging in as a data architect uh, for this for the purpose of this example, and come on. So this is basically the, uh, yeah, on the top you see the URI, but this is very, very cryptic. Basically the page that surfaces the data for the instance of the uh, 2012 Olympics. And on this page, in this template, we are displaying, for example, okay, in this widget here, the, the venues of the competitions that are taking place. Uh, 
etc. Here's some statistics about the uh, distribution of the competitors by disciplines. Here a list of ah okay I forgot one <laughs> forgot to mention uh, one important thing. So why uh, why actually managing this uh, instance data and ontology based instance data? So these instances are then in the end also used to uh, tag annotate the unstructured content, obviously. And perhaps let me just show that on a particular page of an uh, of an athlete. So this is Alistair Brownlee, this uh, triathlete, right? Uh, and you see the kind of data that we have available for him. Uh, oh here, here you see a form for, uh, for, for editing the data, right? I mean, this is, I think, fairly straightforward. I don't need to explain much about that. So you have various uh, components for, so depending on the data modality, you have different components for adding the data, yes, for example, for setting the gender, date of birth, and so on. Or we want to add a new competition, yes, so you have, uh, uh, no, let me, let's try a discipline. If you want to add a discipline, like, uh, for example, he's doing, I don't know, yeah, let's say he's doing synchronized swimming. And he has gained some weight. So 71, no. Good. Uh, let me finish this. Just. Um, yeah, okay, so here in this um, timeline you actually see the, the assets that have been tagged with uh, Alyssa Brownlee. Let me perhaps go on one uh, such asset. So what you will see now, hopefully, if the wireless is working, it's not loading the page. So this seems to be some... Ah, now it's loading, it's just slow. So this is actually how this uh, page or this asset would actually look on the BBC website. Yes, so this is one particular article that has been uh, tagged within, uh, with instances of the ontology. In this case, has been tagged with Alistair Brownlee as a person, has been tagged with uh, the team Great Britain as a, as a sporting organization. Yeah? Well, and then you can easily add uh, text to, to additional persons and so on. Right? Um, yeah, let me perhaps... Uh, Perhaps a couple of things about this, this editorial workflow. But this is really slow now with the network. Okay. Now here, you, here you see, for example, these this, uh, changes that I just did. Yeah. So uh, this is actually broken down to changes on the on the level of RDF triplets. What I just did was. Uh, I added an uh, additional discipline to Alistair Brownlee and I changed the weight yeah, by removing uh, the value of uh, 70 and adding the value of uh, 71. And then I see here basically, uh, well, provenance information, when the change has been perform performed, that it's currently in draft state, it's been performed by the data architect, and then depending on the current state of this change, I can perform different uh, actions. Yeah? Well, depending on the user role that I have, in this case I'm a data architect, and for example, uh, allowed to approve a uh, particular change. Yeah? Um, okay, network is slow. Uh, okay, so now the state has changed and I can either publish this change to the live website or set it back to draft. Yeah? Okay, but what's also nice really is uh, this uh, visual exploration of the, of the athletes that you of course also have here with uh, more interesting uh, metadata. So every this is, this is the, uh, the Team Great Britain, yeah? so every uh, person here is a member of the uh, Team Great Britain. You see the kind of metadata that has been uh, authored here. And then, yeah, you can do interesting uh, analysis, for example, plot the, plot the height, yeah, or you can, I don't know, where, where do we have the, the weight, yeah, if you're only interested in the Uh, the high rate, you can find the, the big fat ones. Uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I spent already an hour and didn't talk about uh, the really interesting application scenario of our enterprise clouds. I think I will have to uh, skip this, but perhaps. Uh, perhaps I will just show this one slide. Um, so basically, w what we do with our uh, product, the eCloud Manager, where we are also using this technology, is really to support all aspects of data center operations. Yeah? 
and there are these uh, uh, data center operations across all resources in, in the data center. Perhaps I do need to go back uh, one slide to explain this. Uh, really, we provide an, uh, with our technology an integrated view and support operations over all resources uh, in virtualized data centers. Yeah? Resources on the on the infrastructure layer, yeah? compute infrastructure. Yeah? So where we're talking about clusters of machines that run uh, physical hosts that have uh, virtual machines uh, on them, storage infrastructure, yeah? um, applications that run in these virtualized uh, environments. Yeah? So basically, all aspects of uh, technical resources of a data center. Uh, as well as uh, the business side. Yeah? Uh, so, for example, uh, our projects that are, are, are running or associated with your data, uh, data center, information about customers, ticketing systems, and so on. Yeah? Uh, and here we really uh, provide an integrated management software to support all operations, including monitoring, uh, provisioning of resources, uh, etc. And here, this uh, semantic integration technologies, as well as the semantic wiki technology, comes uh, really handy in supporting, for example, uh, well, on the one hand, linking uh, the various uh, data sources, yeah, business data to technical data, supporting technical documentation through wiki uh, in um, uh, in the software. Uh, doing responsibility management, uh, ticketing systems, etc. Yeah, so various forms of uh, processes and workflows that we can support uh, in the sof uh, software. Uh, I would have a demo, but I think I will uh, have to stop here. Perhaps I can uh, take a couple of questions in the end, or yeah. Uh, I think it would be fairly difficult uh, to reuse our components in a semantic media wiki uh, context. Right? Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. So we have integrated various uh, third party components for visualizing, navigating, and so on. Uh, so this graph that you uh, saw there was uh, that was from the JIT uh, graph library. Uh, the, um, the the charting uh, stuff that you saw uh, is uh, primarily based on uh, AM charts, uh, AM charts, AM maps. Uh, so there are different implementations available in, 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 in Flash as well as uh, pure HTML5 JavaScript. So basically what we did with our uh, widgets there is that we embedded these uh, third party components in a way that you can really use them out of the box on any RDF data yeah, without further configurations. Yeah. So for example, this pivot viewer that you saw there. Yeah. Uh, this is also building on a, on, on a third party component from Microsoft in that case. But uh, with our uh, integration that we did, this integration as a widget, we can really use this component without further configuration on any RDF graph, yeah, no matter what you put uh, in there. Yeah. Uh, same for uh, the other kind of uh, visualization interaction components that we have. Um, yeah, so for example, this, this pivot viewer that, uh, that I was showing here, this is based on uh, the Microsoft pivot viewer. Yeah? And we basically provided a linked data bridge with our widget there. Yeah, um, yeah but uh, in principle, uh, it's possible to embed any kind of uh, third party components. And I was just showing a very short, uh, small selection. Uh, uh, the range of widgets that we have integrated is, uh, is much larger than that. And also, yeah. Yeah, clearly, yeah. yeah. Yes. 
yeah, it's it, well, uh, there are two answers to that. Uh, I think generally you are right that, but typically you don't uh, sell technology, yeah? no matter whether it's semantic technology or what any, you can take any kind of uh, technology, yeah? but just, uh, you try to sell solutions, right? Solutions to, to problems, yeah? Uh, so I was here focusing probably more on the technology side uh, rather than the use case side, but what uh, uh, we go to customers, uh, you focus on the use cases, on the solutions for particular problems. That, uh, that is true. On the other hand, uh, there are more and more companies really interested in semantic technologies, in applying semantic technologies. Not semantic web per se, but semantic technologies. Yeah? Uh, take the BBC, for example. Yeah? So for them, uh, dynamic semantic publishing is really a business strategy. Yeah? And they are looking for technology providers in this space. And there are other companies. Yeah? And also, uh, pharma domain is also a good, uh, good example. Yeah? So there are companies who really look for, let's say, semantic integration capabilities or semantic wiki fun uh, functionality. Uh, yeah. So there are these two types. Yeah? There are, uh, customers who are interested in technology and Customers who are interested in solutions to their problems. Now, of course, they're not. Uh, these are not disjoint sets, but uh, um, yeah. Did, does that answer your question? Or yeah. Okay, uh, in that context, our technology is not used on the on the audience-facing side, yeah, not on the actual website. Uh, as I mentioned, this is really just for in-house use, for supporting data journalists and so on. Yeah. Um, the the pages, I mean, everything that you saw, all these queries, visualizations, they're really uh, executed. Uh, the queries are executed, uh, and the pages are rendered dynamically when the page loads. Yeah. Uh, so there's no uh, caching involved there, no. Yeah. And uh, I mean, as you saw, this still uh, allows to uh, get real-time visualizations, responses uh, for large data sets. Yeah. I mean, this, this was a, these are very small data sets, but we do have applications uh, with uh, where we have databases with uh, billions of triples, uh, and it works just as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, what I was showing was, uh, I think, no, okay. L let me put it uh, the other the other way around. The, the open source version is uh, is fully functional. Yeah, it uh, includes all of these visualizations that you saw. Uh, the enterprise uh, version includes additional things that are really relevant in an in enterprise context, like, uh, for example, our user management and uh, access control. Yeah. In the, uh, in the community edition, we have very basic. Uh, management without access control so basically everybody can do everything yeah in uh, the enterprise edition we have very fine granular uh, access control on the data level on uh, function level um, we also have additional uh, data providers that are relevant in the enterprise context uh, things like that yeah but the uh, community edition is uh, fully functional yeah. and also the, obviously the enterprise edition comes with enterprise level support